Hello and welcome to the Modern Endpoint Management OC talk here. I have Tobias on the call. Hello, Tobias. Hello, nice to be here. Nice to meet you. So I'm looking forward for this interview. So Tobias, let's uh, get started. Let's have your name and age and personal, uh, personal status and where do you live? Yeah, uh, so my name is Tobias Almen. Um, I am 29, pushing 30. So this February, it's it's the big day, <laughs> <laughs> going over the edge. Um, I live with my girlfriend and uh, two cats uh, right on the plains outside of Linköping, Sweden. So yeah, there is nothing around for miles. When the wind picks up, it really picks up. It can be <laughs> fun sometimes. Mm. Nice. Um, yeah, it, it's beautiful in the summer when you have the view and it's completely open. But uh, yeah, during autumn and winter, it can become <laughs> not so fun. No, but but uh, you're sweet, so so I guess that uh, you are familiar with 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 cold and snow and and stuff like that right of course we're used to it yeah we have yeah, it nine yeah. months a year you know so yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, do you do you ski i've been on skis one time in my life okay. um I, my butt has never hurt so hard from skiing after one week uh, i mean <laughs> absolutely i fell down 50 times <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I guess I think, it's alpine then. Alpine yeah, skiing. Yeah. First and only time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hmm. I just um yeah, you know, see I, I see Sweden for me and it's like okay, the Olympics uh, they they are skiers. So uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we always lose to Norway, so <laughs> not always, but <laughs> often often. Very often. <laughs> Very often, yeah. <laughs> Okay, Tobias, you are you are a young one, and um, that means you have not been in the business as long as some of the other OCs. But uh, how how long have you been in the business? I've been in the business for around ten years. Um, so started out in the first second line support, as most do, um, and then I started working with MDM for six or seven years ago now. Mm. Uh, so that's when I switched to being a consultant. So I was first second line support for three years and then switched to consultant and started with MDM right mm. off the bat. Okay, nice. Uh, so I've been working with it since we thought it was really cool that we could configure email on the devices. <laughs> Basically the only thing we could do, but it was so cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess uh, some of the breakers here was was ac actually Apple, right, uh, with their iPhone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it really was. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was hard to find at that time. It was really hard to find a system which could actually configure email on Android devices. And uh, not mm. all of them supported um, the Samsung APIs and everything that you needed at, at that time. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, ten years. That's uh, you started as uh, twenty years old, nineteen years old, some something around that. Yeah, something around that. I think mm. yeah, eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, uh, just about. Yeah, that's cool. That sounds like um, about the age I I started as well. So uh, Tobias, when you're not skiing, what what do you do in your spare time then? So my my absolute favorite thing to do in my spare time is motorcycle riding. Uh, so I got my license three years ago now, and yeah, just been on the bike as much as possible since then. Mm. It's so nice, really clears the head, getting out on the road and thinking about absolutely nothing and just driving. That's yeah. So are you, are, are you the type that is a cruiser or are you more like high speed and, and um, yeah, danger? It, it, 
something in between. It's naked street bike. Um, okay. Not the really fast ones, and it's not a cruiser. It's yeah, you know, something in between. <laughs> mm. So Going it's not a Kawasaki Ninja. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I think I would kill myself in a week after having that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah, I'm not gonna take that risk. <laughs> no, no, no. So. Uh, the reason why I ask, I, I've seen some some car chases in in Sweden, in Stockholm. There's uh, some 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 videos on YouTube, and uh, yeah. But uh, no, please don't uh, don't do a danger like that. It's uh, it's crazy to look at. Um, <laughs> but nice. Yeah, I... Do you do you do anything uh, other than 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 biking? It sounds nice. Other than biking, it it's. Yeah, you know, fixing around the house, um, just building things, renovating. Um, as I live in the countryside and have a house, you know, it's a lot of fixing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something I find, um, you know, fun to do as well. Do something with your hands, actually, you know, physical mm. work. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, when, when something breaks, it's not fun, but... If it is something that you want to do, renovate the room or something, then it can be really fun to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, closing down the water or something like that, never fun. But um, no. yeah, <laughs> housework, you can see what you do and it's not like IT and it's put into some computer and then you close down that and you can't see whatever you did. So yeah, I can understand why that is uh, that is fun. So, Tobias, um, you work at a company currently, and uh, what company is that? So, I work for Seigate in uh, Sweden, and uh, it's a company which is part of Telia company. Uh, it's one of the biggers, bigger carriers in the Nordics and Baltics region. Uh, so, we are the uh, consultancy division of Telia, basically. So actually the same as uh, as Niklas. Yes, Niklas is my colleague. Mm. But he he's in Malmö. And yes. that's that's far from Linköping. I think it's what is it? This is four hour drive, something like that. On on your uh, bike or on a regular <laughs> car? Well, on my bike is five hours. I take it so oh, Okay. <laughs> So, but yeah, re regular car, it's uh, around four hours. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I know the cars and in, 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 uh, I guess the bicycle as well is, is much cheaper than in Denmark because we, are, we, have, we have so high taxes. It's unbelievable. It's, it's yeah, like one, 150%. Yeah, Thanks. and I, I switched to an electrical car uh, when I started at Seagate. Um and they are not cheap. <laughs> no, they are cheap in Denmark because the tax is lower on on electrical cars because they want to to have a greener environment. So they yeah. push, yeah, for hybrid cars and 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 uh, electrical cars like Teslas. So uh, we see a lot of uh, cars changing in, in the Danish infrastructure here. So, um, mm -hmm. okay, that's uh, that's good to know. I didn't know that uh, the electrical car would, was was expensive in Sweden, but um, mm. it, it's. I think it's especially since it's a company car. Um, so they actually, they increased the taxes uh, for you as a person if you have a company car. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's it's. Quite a lot more expensive per year now um, to mm. own it, uh, mm. or not own it, but having it as a company car. So tell me one thing: is it is it a Volvo? It's a Polestar. <laughs> it's a Polestar. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So but I guess Vol Volvo. <laughs> okay. 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 So I was saying a Chinese uh, freezer. Polestar isn't it that Chinese? You could say that as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that fits well in a car factory, I believe. <laughs> Let, yeah, it, you, yeah, it, it's 99% Chinese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how it goes, right? That's how it goes. 
So you work at Psygates and uh, we've just been through a pandemic and it's it's still out there. But um, have you been working from home these past one and a half year or how how how, how was your work schedule? Yeah, I've been, I've been actually been working from home even since before I started working for Psygate. Um, and this December I worked for Sygate for a one year. Um, so I, I am in the office on and off, but primarily I'm working from home. Mm. So I think in total, I would say I've been working from home for two and a half, three years, maybe. Okay. That's, um, I think the, the thing that is nice about working from home is that you don't have that, um, that time going to work and going back, at least if, if you're going into the city, you will have some traffic yeah. there. You'll lose a lot of time, right? So. Yeah, I mean, the commute time, it's not that fun. Um, no. I used to drive to Stockholm three times a week before. So commuting oh. to Stockholm and back to Linköping. So <laughs> that's, that's a drive. four hours commute per day, per day um, yeah. not including, uh, you know, Traffic. Hmm. Ha, huh, that far. In the US, that's nothing, but <laughs> for our Nordic, Nordic countries, that's uh, that's a very, very long commute. Yeah, yeah. And it's not a fun road either. <laughs> no, it's not. And um, I guess the, the fines in Sweden are pretty high if you go too fast. I think not too long ago I went 10 kilometers uh, over. And that was, I don't remember exactly, but maybe 2,000 crowns, something like that. Then you shouldn't have gone to work that day. <laughs> not, it's not no. cheap. No. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. So, how many hours would you say that you spent on, on work if you? <clears throat> If you take work and you also take like blogging and read blogs and, and make yourself um, uh, more clever on, on some topics, how many, how many hours do you put in a week? I would say, I mean, normally um, a normal day, it's eight hours for um, the customers. Um, uh, if it's not like yesterday, where it ended up being nine or ten hours, uh, but after that, I usually, uh, you know, sit down, read articles, read blogs, or blog on my own, and uh, that usually takes maybe three, four hours per day as well. Um, so, yeah, thirteen, fourteen, four hours, hours, something like that. Mm. Yeah, um, there's always something fun to read up on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's always some topic that you haven't touched uh, upon, right? And you just want to test that and you just want to test that. And oh, there's also this solution I need to check out. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, and, very difficult. And, and if it's something I find interesting, I get really stuck in it. Uh, mm. I I just can't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also a quality. So I guess digging further and digging further in on 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 the solution and find out what what what's in it and understand yeah. it. Mm. Yeah. So Tobias, when did you become a OC for the endpoint management group? Let's hope I don't get this wrong, but June this year. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Give and take. So Give and take. <laughs> <laughs> so still quite new. Yeah. And Angel, she reached out to you and uh, how that, how, 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 how made that you feel? I mean, w when you get the message, it's, you know, it's a token of appreciation for the content that you create and content that, that you give to the community. And of course, that is always a good feeling um, mm. when you know that the things you are creating 
to help people is appreciated. Um, so yeah, warm feeling getting that mm. message from Angel. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, when when you put a lot of hours into something that you not directly get money for and you get recognized this way, I, I mean, it means a lot. So yeah. that like or that response to your blog, it means a lot, right? Yeah, every, every interaction you have uh, with people, um, you know, actually benefiting from the content, it, it's always an extra push to mm. give more. Exactly. And yeah, yeah, good thoughts, good thoughts. So what, what do you think of the, the group so far? I think it's an amazing group. Um, we have so much people now. Uh, what are we up to? 15,000. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we have some of the best people uh, in the space. We have you, we have a lot of MVPs, um, my colleagues. So, you know, it's, it's a really good community and a really helpful one at that. Mm. Uh, so yeah, one of the one of the keys is helpfulness, right? Um, yeah. I see a lot of people writing in there, and, and they they get response and help on on the topics that they they actually need help for. And yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. it's you know, if if I miss something, I can get a message from Angel asking me, "Hey, can can you have a look at this?" Mm. Uh, so. Angel is really involved in this community as well. Yeah. I think that is one of the key things. I believe so too, because having a community that is unmanaged, like nobody's watching over the, the, the content here, it, it, it has a, uh, it, it becomes dead maybe. And, and, and then there's no one that, says okay we need to to have responses for this otherwise people won't uh, won't come in and see uh, and and get help or seek help another time so i think angel is doing a very good job on commenting the blog post we do and actually dragging people in if you can see okay this is something tobias maybe could ask uh, or, or or i'll be helpful with so so let's ask him and and get him involved so i think that's great yeah definitely mm. yeah mm. so next question is, is is kind of a counter so if this group was not uh, here, where would you go and seek that information? What did you do before this group? I think personally, um, mainly Twitter. Uh, the Microsoft community is really active on Twitter. Mm. Um, so that was probably the main uh, you know, media I used uh, to interact with people and, and get information. And then, of course, you know you have the, the the blogs from 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 the community, from Microsoft, and everything. But to actually interact with the community, I think Twitter was the main thing. Mm. Yeah, I I like Twitter as well. The thing about Twitter is it's 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 so short messages, so it can be quite yeah. hard to get your point out there, right? It needs to be very short and clear. Yes, you 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 really do have to get to the point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and then you you don't have uh, space for that uh, tag, and then you go yeah. And you yeah nobody will see it ever <laughs> if you don't <laughs> tag it. <laughs> That's the most annoying thing. Uh, you write your text and then oh wait, I need a tag. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, yeah, great, very great. So. Tobias, we haven't talked about what areas you cover because um, the other guys, the other OCs, we've we've been more covering mem stuff, so Intune and and all the the stuff that goes around Intune. Um, so so, what do you like to cover? Mainly, I cover iOS, Android, and macOS. 
Uh, so that is the, the three platforms that I mainly have my focus on. Um, and almost 100%, it's uh, managed in Intune. So that's the main focus. How can we, in the best way possible, have these platforms managed in Intune? Mm. Uh, and with that, if you look at the Mac OS side of things, uh, you know, you have a really active community, uh, the Mac admins, and they put out a lot of great tools for you mm. to use. Okay. So it's not, you know, it, it's not tied specifically to Intune features, but it can be third party community tools uh, integrated using Intune. So you can improve the management of the platforms you have. Mm. And uh, I think, yeah, I, I've been on a monkey frenzy lately. lately. <laughs> um, it's something that's really fun to work with. And uh, you get so much benefit out of using it uh, because the application management for Max and Intune, it's, yeah. You, you can uh, say it, you can say it. It's, uh, I, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. let's put in a beep <laughs> yeah we'll put in a beep <laughs> okay um yeah but you know it's when you really dig dig into this and you integrate azure together with intune together with the third party tools and you get the the complete solution it's something that is really fun to build and gives a lot of value for both admins and users. Mm. So, um, yeah, but uh, back, back to the question. So mainly iOS, <laughs> Mac OS, Android mm. um, managed in, in MEM. Okay, so now you, you talk about MEM, but, but is there also other tools that you use? What, what about Jam? For example, I've heard a lot of Jamf uh, should be the best uh, tooling for Mac OS and, and, and iOS, for example. Yes, Jamf is extremely good uh, when you look at Mac OS management. It's, I, yeah, I don't think you can beat it. <laughs> and I have, I have worked um, with Jamf. I have certified myself on Jamf. Um, I don't have any active customer cases right now, but I do want to dig deeper into Jamf as well, especially since you know you can integrate Jamf uh, with Intune, mm. um, so, you, so you can get value there as well. So you can have best-in-class macOS management, and you can have Intune. Yeah, that's so, uh, that sounds expensive in in licensing. <laughs> It's not the cheapest product, but yeah, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, I, I have a lot of customers that has bought a Microsoft E3 license and then they say, okay, we we, we, we would like to look at all the features that we can, can get from this license. And maybe they have another MDM system for their mobile devices and uh, they see, okay, this is a part of our license. So yeah. maybe we, we go down a feature or two for now uh, I mean, Intune has really um, increased on on that um, on that part. Um, so, but but the real deal here is when you do the shifts, it's 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 rather irritating, right, for the for the users because it's it's there every day, and you resetting their phone because it's debt and and all these kind of things you have to do with their phones. Nobody yeah, it, is it, going to it, shout. Yay! Working with phones is a touchy feely subject. Yeah. Uh, because and users see them as personal things. They have their mm. personal data on the phones. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, migration projects and phones registered to DEP or KME or Zero Touch or whatever. Always a fun topic to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is. So, okay, nice to know. So you're all about the mobile, what the MDM is really about, the mobile devices. Yes, mm -hmm. that's where 
I started and where I still am today. Mm. Yeah. So if just a question about Jamf and Intium. So if if you have those two products and and you would integrate them, what would the benefit be? Would that be for having compliance signals or what 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 do we get from that? Yes. So the main benefit you do get is you get the compliance date into Intune so that you can use uh, conditional access policies and require compliant devices before they can access data. Mm. Uh, so that's, that is the main benefit of integrating the two. And this integration is uh, available to more solutions than just Jamf. It's available to Workspace ONE and Mobile Iron. Uh, so, you know, Microsoft has opened up this API. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and that's actually, I started, you. that's where I started with Workspace ONE or AirWatch, as is what's called at the time. Um, so I worked 100% for five years uh, with that. Nice. Before the switch to Intune. Mm. Yeah, I also worked with a product called Lightspeed. Ooh, never heard of it. Never? No? Well, we have Danish customers with uh, <laughs> Lightspeed. And once I migrated them, they say, oh man, this give it's it it's so user friendly. They really like Intune. And I'm like, yeah, it's user friendly. And now you have your management of your de Windows devices and your iOS devices and your iPad OS in yeah. the same console. And it's the same way that works. You have the configuration profiles, you have the yeah, it's it's I, I really like that they integrated into to one console. Hmm. Uh, and, and that's the thing, you know, you, you get all of these things in in this one console. Um, so when you achieve that, um, that that's yeah, euphoria. Mm. So uh, one more question about these dear mobile devices. So what about uh, malware stuff? I, 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 on my iOS device, I don't have, I don't carry around with McAfee or Defender or anything like that. Would, would, would you, would you do that on Androids or I've never owned a Android device? So, sorry, take that, take that again. For Android devices, would I? Yeah, yeah. Would I, would I put on some anti malware system like McAfee or Defender Suite oh. or something like that? Yeah. Um, well, it's, you know, it's always good to have mobile threat defense in place, uh, even though even on Android, it's less common today, uh, that you get the applications with malicious code. Mm. Uh, you have Google, Google play, uh, protect, and you have all of these things that verifying the applications. Um, but yeah, it can happen. Um, so I would advise to use mobile threat defense, but mainly maybe for uh, phishing. Mm. Um, you know, th that's one of the main targets we have today. That's phishing on mobile devices. Mm. Um, so yes, I, I would say to anybody, <laughs> use Defender or use Lookout or what you have available to protect your users on your phones as well. Hmm. Most companies actually, you know, they forget about it. They have all of these systems and everything in place for Windows and for Mac OS, but there's nothing in place for iOS and Android. No. And the weakest link? Yeah, there we have it, yeah. users. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So if, yeah, if you haven't, start looking at it. <laughs> yeah. So if you have an E3 license, Microsoft E3 license, is there actually anything in that you could leverage? Because on, on Windows devices, now we get the P1 of the Defender, uh, Defender for Endpoints, but yeah. I, I am not aware if that also carries over to phones. I, ooh, I don't remember exactly, but I think they did a change for licensing on mobile as well. 
Um, I'm terrible mm. at licensing. <laughs> oh, I am too. That's a circus. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think there was a change to it um, that you could get something out of E three for phones as well. Mm. But is there a add on that you put on to to customers if if you have this phishing um, uh, extra safety for these mobile phones or? Is it just uh, another product that you buy? Um, you know, if you are in the Microsoft uh, sphere, you you can push Microsoft Defender for both mm. Android and iOS, and you have phishing protection uh, using that. Yeah. Um, and on Android, you also have malicious application uh, protection. So, you know, it scans the applications uh, that mm. you have on your device. That's nice. Yeah, so you get... Um, Malicious code um, prevention and uh, phishing as well mm. on Android. Cool. Yeah, I haven't heard of, I've heard about that on iOS, <clears throat> but that's maybe because they are so tightly um, in in the control of their apps. I don't know. Maybe. Um, yeah, I, I don't really. I don't see the big benefit on iOS, uh, mainly for Android uh, scanning the applications. Of course, yeah. it can happen on, on iOS, but it's rare. It's rare, yeah. I haven't seen it, um, so. But again, it's uh, it's software. It can happen. Yeah. So to be as I was, uh, this made me more clever on 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 mobile devices. So thank you for that. Uh, hope uh, for the viewers as well. Yeah, it's very 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 nice. So if you have to name like three publications that you make you the proudest, what what would you what would you tell us about that? I think this is a tough one picking out <laughs> the favorites. <laughs> You're not the first saying that. <laughs> um the, the posts I like the most. Uh, is the post where I can be the most creative. Uh, what I mean by that is mainly, you know, building something. Um, so I have one post, uh, which is a power app called Intune Notifications, where you as an administrator can uh, get details on your environment, w what's happening with a VPP tokens, the DEP tokens, is it syncing, what is connected where, uh, which accounts is, uh, are used. So it's a power app connected with power flows uh, to get the information and display it. Um, I think that, that is something that was really fun to build. Hmm. Um, so that's one of them. <laughs> yeah, I saw that post and I was uh, I was impressed. So the VPP, just for the users to understand, what is that? So volume purchase program from Apple, where you can buy licenses for applications and own them as a company um, and revoke licenses from users uh, if they should leave the company. Mm. Yeah, sounds uh, like a, a great uh, scenario or useful scenario. It, it's really useful and applications can be installed silently, so you don't even have to use an Apple ID. Ah, that's yeah. nice. That is really nice. <laughs> yeah. Makes the onboarding process really beautiful uh, on iOS devices mm. and Mac OS for that matter as well. Okay, yeah. That's cool. So is there... Um... Is there maybe something that you want to to show on maybe a little demo or something? Uh, yes, so my plan was that we can actually do a demo on um, the auto PKG post I did not too long ago. Um, mm -hmm. So what this is, is um, auto PKG is basically a way to automate the application packaging and updating for macOS devices. Um, so, you know, the, the normal flow, you download the application, 
to get it into Intune or Monkey or whatever you use. Uh, you change the scripts, you change the icons or whatever it may be. So also PKG's uh, goal is to do this, all of this automatically for you uh, using recipes. Hmm. So if everything goes according to plan, <laughs> <laughs> All I should have to do is to uh, create a recipe on my device, push that to my Azure DevOps account, where I have a repository where all of, all of my recipes are housed. When I do this push, a pipeline in Azure DevOps will run and it will go ahead and download this application, put all of the parameters for Monkey to the application, upload it to my Monkey repository. When that happens, another pipeline runs automatically. So because I'm committing to the main branch on that repository, it is automatically pushing the application to Azure storage which my Mac devices are connecting to, to get the applications. So it's all an automated flow um, to get the application, to publish the application, everything. Wow, what, what a flow, I mean. So these applications, they go to a Azure Blob storage and not to the app management in Intune? Exactly. So uh, since I am using Monkey uh, to manage my applications for Mac devices, I do publish them to Azure Storage, uh, where the Macs connect to download and install applications. So they are not uh, uploaded to Intune, but they're uploaded to Azure. Yeah. Hmm. Awesome. Sounds like a uh... A good solution around. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and the beautiful part around it is that since you can run this pipeline on a schedule, it will automatically go ahead and find updates to the application and publish the updates as well. Um, so you won't have to look around, is there a new update for Firefox or Chrome or uh, whatever? Uh, the pipeline will do that for you. Hmm. and upload the application as well. So is this actually also a kind of third-party patching for your Mac devices? Yes, so this is a third-party created tool, um, like Monkey is. Hmm. So this is all done by the Mac community. Wow. Oh so yeah, open source, free to use. Go ahead. Powerful stuff. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. So let's see if I am able to share the correct screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you have a lot of them, then uh, yeah, that's. I uh, have three at the moment, and then an iPad as a fourth screen. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. to make it interesting. Yes, of course. Is it a pro or what What type of iPad is that? Uh, yeah, it's an older iPad Pro. So it's a very uh, large one. No, no, the small one. OK. I, uh, I just saw, you know, the releases of M1 Max and everything, and I really want one. <laughs> Yeah, but the thing is that uh, it's pretty expensive, right? And with all these, uh, this crazy market and all these resources they, they can't find, the prices have been going up and up and up. Yeah, and if, yeah. Uh, since I have free screens, um, the only way you can get native support for free external screens is to buy the M1 Max. Um, and that is, you know, 42,000 Swedish crowns. Ouch. So, uh, yeah. 
I doubt you, I'll get that soon. You tell your boss at Sygate you want one. <laughs> yeah. I really, really need one. Yes. Oh, can we see the screen? We can see the screen, yes. Fantastic. So, um, the first thing, uh, so this is already prepared for uh, Git. So I have added my uh, repository on my device and configured everything that needs to be configured to use Git uh, in the terminal. So what I'm going to do is to create a recipe uh, for, uh, we'll choose Firefox for this. Uh, create that locally on my device and then push this uh, to my Azure DevOps repository. <laughs> All we have to do to actually uh, create an override uh, recipe on my device is to go ahead and type auto pkg make override firefox.link dot recipe. And that recipe exists on your device or was that on your Azure? So this recipe is uh, downloaded from Auto PKG's recipe repository. Hmm. So you have one which is from Auto PKG and you have a bunch of repositories which are from uh, community members or uh, other vendors as well. There, there is a large uh, number of recipes that you can use. And since they are prepared for Monkey, so you can see it's called Monkey.recipe. And if we look inside this recipe, we can see some PKG info keys. So here we have parameters which will be used in Monkey when we publish this package. Hmm. We can see that it will be added to uh, the testing catalog, for example, so that we don't import all new updates and packages to the production catalog and push everything automatically to everyone. Uh, so this, you know, it, it gives us some level of control so that we can actually test this internally before we push it to the users. Hmm. And these, you can change all of these if you want to. These are all things you can edit. So if I do not want to add Firefox to um, an app's subfolder, I can just go ahead and delete that. Okay. But we'll leave the default for now. So yep. we can see how it looks in the repo when it's added. So uh, we've just added uh, the recipe to our local repository. The so next, next thing we have to do is commit this and push it to our Azure DevOps repo. So for this, I will just go ahead and add every change made in my local repository. Create a new commit. Add Firefox. We can see one file changed and mm -hmm. it's Firefox. And we can then go ahead and push this to our main branch. And the password. <laughs> At least I'm protected. Yeah, at least it's protected. I mean, if you could and push it without. Ah. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> I did not go ahead and pull the changes on the repo. Ah. Okay, 
So, <laughs> uh, I did not go ahead and pull the changes, which was made in the Azure DevOps repository. So mm -hmm. I could not uh, push a new version before I, I did that. Makes sense. Uh, so yeah, I had to pull it down. So Firefox mm -hmm. disappeared. So we have to create it again. Yeah. I guess that's for not having a mismatch when you push. Yeah, exactly. So make sure when you're working with Git, always do a pull first. Mm. Cool. We have yeah. our Firefox Monkey recipe again. So let's create a new commit. And now we should be able to push it. Beautiful. Yay. Worked. And was fast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, small files, two kilobytes. Yeah, OK, OK. The real stuff happens in Azure DevOps. Mm -hmm. So if we go ahead and update to check our repository. We can see that Firefox was added. And our auto PKG pipeline has kicked off. So this pipeline will now go ahead and it uses a hosted macOS agent. So we're using macOS because we want to run Monkey and auto PKG in the command line. Uh, so we can actually download the application, use the recipe we created, and uh, add it to our monkey repository. So when we are at the run auto PKG step, that's where um, we use the recipes and we download the application and add them to our Monkey repository. This, depending on how big the application is, this can take up to, you know, for me it takes two minutes because I don't have too many applications right now. <laughs> um, but if you have quite big applications, then it can take some time. Mm. I could imagine. So this is basically making your app available. So from yes, yeah. Uh, so this this pipeline is basically downloading the application and preparing it for for use with Monkey. Hmm. Um, and we'll see when this pipeline finishes that we will have a new branch created for our Monkey repository. So I don't push this to the main branch because I want, I as an administrator, want some level of control mm. when new versions or new applications are pushed. Yeah. So I have to merge the changes to the main branch before they are actually added to Monkey. Mm. Here we can, can see, see you have a DMG. Yeah. So it downloaded the Firefox version 93. DMG. Mm -hmm. In this flow, um, I also use um, an integration to Virus Total. So the package is uploaded to Virus Total, scanned, and if we get any uh, warnings from Virus Total, then it won't upload the package. <laughs> it will skip That's it. Of that's uh, that's that's great. <laughs> so yeah, you know, you know, Azure Storage has been encrypted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pay pay bitcoins. Everyone's Azure Storage encrypted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the pipeline finished. And if everything went according to plan, 
I should have a message in uh, in uh, Teams if something went wrong. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's a blue screen for Teams. A blue screen. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Uh, but yeah, so we can see here that Firefox was actually imported and it was to our testing catalog. And we can see the package path and the PKG info path. So these are monkey specific configurations. And just to make it e easier for myself, I added a create pull request button to the webhook. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to go into Azure DevOps, uh, find a repo, find uh, the branch, and do everything manually. So everything I have to do is click um, create pull request. I'm taken to Azure DevOps. It automatically finds uh, the branch for the application. Uh, title, description, everything is prepared. So I just have to create it. And then complete the pull request. So now the changes are merged to the main branch. And when that happens, the monkey pipeline kicks off. Mm -hmm. So this pipeline will now upload everything or synchronize everything I have in my repository here for monkey to Azure storage. Nice. And if we look in the repository under PKGs, we can see that we have Firefox 93. There is the GMG and under PKG info, uh, we have Firefox 93 playlist. So here they are. Nice. And the playlist, it, it looked like the recipe was. Yeah, was so that it's, uh, if we, we can go a back. A lot, lot of commands. We have. Um, this is all the information we have about the application. Uh, so we can see the bundle identifier, uh, the bundle name, uh, the version. Uh, so everything related to Firefox. Mm. And here you can say if it's uninstallable or not. So the user in this case cannot uninstall this. Okay. And these are all things that you can configure for the applications using Monkey Admin as well. So you can have an application on your Mac. Uh, so you can get a UI to customize how you want your applications to be deployed. Wow. Uh, yep, yeah, the Monkey pipeline finished successfully as well. So if we go back to Azure Storage, where we have the Monkey repository for the Max. Firefox is now available. So success. Success. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So this would, uh, you know, a Mac would now be able to uh, to get this package if they are part of the testing catalog, which we push to. Mm. And if, you know, let, let's say Firefox 93.2 is released, then <clears throat> this will automatically uh, pull down the package, create um, the branches, everything uploaded for you. All you have to do is to merge uh, the request to the main branch. That's very cool. So, yeah, uh, from, automated from, flow. From doing that merge, it's, it looks very easy. So. Uh, the one who is getting that message in Teams, is that the IT admin or is that the boss? Who, who's going to click that button? So the, this can be, uh, uh, who, you know, whoever you want it to be. Um, you can have your operations team um, merging requests or you as the Mac admin, maybe you have to actually approve the merge. But operations can make sure uh, that applications are are um, 
created using AutoPCGs, they can create the recipes, uh, push them up, but you as the Mac admin has to uh, approve the merge request uh, to the main branch. So this is all, you can set this up how you want to using um, permissions in Azure DevOps. So you can get hmm. that full DevOps flow. And yeah. I think that that's, I've been really into DevOps lately. I, I, I don't know why, it's so interesting to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think DevOps can do many, many things. I use DevOps at the time for, for Agile framework and uh, Scrum. Yeah. yeah. So it, 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 it can definitely be used for, for many, 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 many things. And I also know a company that have a, a, a MDM as code on, on DevOps engine, which just um, sync tenants. It's, it's quite nice what DevOps actually can do for you yeah you can do so much automation um mm. i'm i'm just starting to look at how we could use uh, devops to um if we have a dev environment of of mem mm. to pull configurations from that environment and push them to the production environment yeah um, so you do all the work in dev you push a button and the pipelines takes care of this it automatically um pushes the, the changes to production. So you get this continuous delivery. You should have a have a look at Simian Cloud. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. They actually do exactly that. Ah. Yeah. So yeah. you can have one one dev uh, tenant and then you can have all the tenants you like and, and that can sync apps and configurations and and they also have their own standards saying okay you should have these conditional access rules etc 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 so yeah so they have the baseline yeah, that that could be some um inspiration yeah definitely um mm. have to check it out I, I haven't seen it yeah i i have actually have it running in my tenant because uh, yeah i i had a meeting with them uh, they are overseas in the the us so i, yeah. I think it's it's a quite nice tool um to be as this uh this was awesome wow what uh I, it's it's like mind blowing I, I i can't get my head around all these monkey stuff and uh, mac os and <laughs> it's it's just another world for me uh, i mean yeah i'm like okay uh, it's not possible for, for me to replicate anything about that <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> if if i have to manage a mac one day I'll call you in a second. <laughs> Tobias, I have an assignment for you. Uh, Sounds yeah. good. <laughs> so, Tobias, um, any tips or tricks that you, you want to pass on to the viewers? Well, you know, if, if you are uh, like me, managing uh, Mac OS devices, iOS, Android, especially for Mac, there is a really, really active community. Um, the Mac admins Slack, you can find a channel for whatever <laughs> you want to find out about. Um, Monterey updates, issues, uh, you know, what's coming, what's happening. It's, it's a really active and good community mm. and a helpful one. Uh, and of course, if, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me or uh, any of the, the OCs. Um, on LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever, mm. uh, we are, I would say, always available. Yeah, I guess you're, you're right. <laughs> Even when we sleep, oh, someone yeah, needs al help. Al almost. It's buzzing. <laughs> I have to look at it. Exactly. Yeah, I think that was a great tip. And um, yeah, it's been a very uh, big pleasure to have you on, on the show. And um, I, I really hope it, it helped a lot of people managing iOS devices and, and Mac OS devices. Now they, they have a glitch of how it could be on, on their application management and the whole automated flow around that. Yeah. That is super cool.
So uh, Tobias, I just want to thank you for this interview and um, let's say goodbye to the viewers and uh, yeah, it's been a blast. Thank you, Tobias. Thank you very much. Bye. Goodbye.